morning winds. Yeah, didn't stand a chance to be honest with you, but she took it out uh, even though the weatherman didn't stand a chance either. So, let me do this and we'll move on. That's right, it is back again. Nice to have everybody joining us this morning. Uh, and today we're doing something very, very special. Yesterday we were over in the UK, so we thought, well, why not? Let's double dip and go right on back there. Today we're being joined by the band District 13. And believe me, you're going to love it. Honestly, guys, check this out. Ladies and gentlemen, today's feature artists on Galaxy. Galaxy. 107 FM. We get a lot of requests for Cantankerous. What are you talking about? Oh no, I mean, we always play it live. It's just like one of the songs that has been least pushed, I guess, on, um, on like the different socials and whatever. Um, we've not used it as a single. I mean, live people love it actually. Um, just never, I don't know, just because it doesn't have a video and stuff, I guess it's just not been used as a single promotional material. But we all, we, we literally have played it live every single show actually. So Well, um, I've got to be honest with you, I didn't select the music that's coming up for you guys. Production did that. And they work on how many requests per se that you're getting. Uh, as we stage through this interview, you know what I mean? So uh, we've, we've got other Hi, music that is being requested, but not as much as Cantankerous. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah, it's a very nice, yeah. as, as the title <laughs> is good. <laughs> but I, I, I can tell you, literally, there's 997 requests for that particular track, and that's where we're starting, so it's going up from there. Well, oh, right, okay, great. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, we play it up if we come to New Zealand. Yeah, believe me. Uh, and by the way, uh, I know that you've had a couple of songs aired on the BBC. Well, you're going to have more aired on this station than they have. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, okay, because the next one up is Dark Horse. Okay, yeah, then, that's another one that was never released as a single. <laughs> then we're going to do Sweet Talk. Yeah, that one. That one's been on BBC. Yeah, that one. Uh, not a single though. It still wasn't used as a single. Right. So. And then when you come around. Yeah. Okay. Another one. We'll play a lot. <laughs> nice. And, and we're going to um, round it up with "Step Into the Fire." Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. That that one is single. Yeah. No, off the first album, the singles actually ended up. Uh, Three different tracks. Summer is one of the, the most popular ones, uh, live particularly. Um, but uh, no, that's good. All those, we do usually play a lot of the ones you, you, you're playing anyway. You usually put in the live show. We just haven't pushed them as much online. Sweet Talk actually gets quite a good, uh, we do seem to get a good response for that one. Though. I, I think personally too, the, we've got a couple of guys in production that are just huge fans. And uh, I think they've put a little personal selection in there, you know what I mean? You might be interested. Oh, yeah, no, that's fine. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we like all our own songs, I guess, so whichever ones you like is cool. Very cool, <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Uh, how many countries? <clears throat> 94. 94, no. We have gear online. No. There was 74 earlier on this morning. Oh, 82. Thank Gears you. online. Gears online. Nice to have you online, brother man. It is an absolute pleasure. Um, 84. Eight, oh, 84 countries right now are tuned in. Oh, right. Awesome. We, we, it in the world of the internet. Yeah, believe me, we are completely global. And um, I'll give you the stats as we go through. I'll give you the how many we're listening at the end. No good giving it to you now, right? <laughs> <laughs> so... Let's have some fun, guys.
That's right, you're right, Eric Galaxy 107 FM. Absolute pleasure to have everybody on board this morning, including Gear. Nice to have you on board, brother man. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, and today I'm absolutely elated because we're catching up with a young band called District 13 coming out of, well, the UK, out of London in the UK, in fact. Uh, now, we were over that way yesterday. We thought to ourselves, why not? Let's double dip and go right on back to the UK. Now, District 13 are a heavy alternative rock band based in London, UK. The band came together when Arson, uh, which is joining us this morning, the drummer and Richard, who can't make it at the moment, placed an ad for a singer in, uh, uh, what was it? Was it a magazine? Was it a newspaper? Was it online? How, how did you do this? It was online website. Okay. So Gumtree. Gum uh, Richard uh, plays artwork there, so this is how we met three of us. Very, very cool. Nice to have you guys on board. Uh, and uh, uh, Jonathan, it is an absolute pleasure to meet you. As an uh, absolute pleasure as well. Uh, I, I don't pleasure. know. Uh, should we give Richard a bit of uh, stick for not being here? What do you reckon? Uh, yeah, I mean, he. Uh, <laughs> we thought he was going to be here. It's sort of like, uh, yeah, he's. I think he's working still. So. Uh, didn't manage to finish. So, uh, cool. uh, Arson, between you and Richard, whose idea was it to look for a male order singer? Uh, uh, with Richard, we uh, was we played another band before, District 13, but we, um, we were a bit concerned about the style of this band because we were something like session musicians, not... Uh, band members exactly and because we like more uh rock rock oriented music uh, metal things and we decided to start new band and uh, uh decided to to organize auditions and see if uh, we like someone or someone like us <laughs> and start the band and uh john uh, John was the last one uh, in this auditions, and uh, when God, God, started, hold on, hold on, hold on. What do you mean he was okay. the last one? I, I, was he the only one out of the hundreds no, of thousands that we, didn't apply? Was he the one that got the job because he applied? Around fifty thousand people applied <laughs> <laughs> to the position, but so because John, John is unique and. We decided to work together. You, uh, you, so, you, yeah. pick, you picked him up because he's cute, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. It's a smile. That's what it is. Believe me. Uh, how, yeah. John... He's very handsome. <laughs> he is. He is. Now, Jonathan, how yeah. long? How long have you been singing? Uh, singing probably like uh, maybe six years now. I mean, I was always a lead guitarist in bands, so I, I played in uh, a previous band was um, called Romance. We were actually we were had a deal with uh, Universal for a while. Um, that one was was going very well. I had a very good singer and everything. When that fell apart, I just got more and more into singing. Uh, I was doing some a, a, a industrial project for a while with someone that had a lot more uh, programmed music with the drums, it was still very heavy, maybe a bit influenced by like Ramstein or Marilyn Manson or something. But then I really wanted to play raw rock and roll, like honest rock and roll drums, bass uh, and stuff. So um, I saw the advert of uh, these people looking for um, a singer. And yeah, I remember being the last one the day and uh, I, I remember the, the audition songs were uh, Radiohead Creep and uh, Foo Fighters Learn to Fly, and then I, I did them, but then I suggested let's try doing Hey Joe from, uh, well, the Jimi Hendrix version. Um, I'd often use Jam, this a Jam, like, like a more, much more heavy, but extreme version of it. Mm. And uh, yeah, that went really well, and then, yeah, that's, that's pretty much where it started. That was in uh, 2017, it was around November, I remember. Yeah. We didn't really get yeah, yeah. the band until like the next, January the next year, we actually started rehearsing properly as a band. That's uh, really cool. That really, really is cool. Now, at the same time, Jonathan, uh, have you always wanted to play rock? Have you ever? What way made you choose this genre of music? Um. Well, I've always yeah 
to me to me make me want to play guitar originally i was into a lot of music like I, when i was like a kid i did like you know stuff like oasis or, or slightly more pop rock or, and um i then i'd listen to limp biscuit and stuff like that when that would come out but it was really nirvana when i first saw smells like teen spirit i just was very attached to uh that that just really grabbed me in and then like i love that i just got into a lot of um i love like so much classic rock you know guns and roses were a big influence uh growing up and then just all loads and loads of different bands um so just uh i i did then i mean i i have learned you know i, I do some classical piano and like play some jazz and stuff but the, my true heart is in stuff that's very i don't know angst sort of music and stuff that really feels like you're just yelling out at everything kind of thing that's kind of where i feel most at home especially if, if playing a gig or something and like cantankerous i love playing that live for example yeah. now uh, that's a good way to come into this because we did kick the show off with cantankerous so tell me a little bit about this track how did you come to the lyrics <laughs> that one's quite a funny one yeah um the word that was actually from my girlfriend uh every time well, she Every time she'd be angry, uh, I, I just couldn't think of new words to call her. And I thought, oh, cantankerous. She said cantankerous. I don't know. If it was a, a word. And I actually haven't used that word ever in my life. And I thought, let's make a track judged on when she's in a bad mood. <laughs> when she's angry at me or angry at something else. So the, the song, it, it's kind of a joke. I use certain lines in the song are actual phrases she would say to me. Like, I've said it a thousand times. That's a, a thing that I've heard. Or... Uh, I swear to God, um, although I'm saying it much more angry in the track, so that the track, in a way, I used to introduce it sometimes as this is a love song uh, and then play it. Uh, but the, the track itself, um, it, it, it's also not direct, like it could be anyone's bad day at the same time. It's just if you're having a really bad day, that's kind of, you know, that's really the gist of the song. And the whole way it was written with the, the type of chords, very like, uh, just a lot of chords and chromatic power chord type movements. It's, it's got a lot of movement on the go and pounding drums and stuff. And so, so yeah, that's how that one really came together. Um, it was. I mean, we we got a lot of these songs because off our first album, we got a lot of them done. Uh, like we started the band, like I said, in uh, in 2017, and then 2018 by. July, we actually recorded that album. So within six months, all these songs, 12 songs, uh, well, 10 of them were written then. Two of them, uh, Is This The Way and uh, When You Come Around were two songs I'd previously written but never actually done it with a band and I just had them as like home demos. Now, uh, i got to ask you guys, and this is coming from a young lady called Alita out of Glasgow. She's asking, how did you come to the name District 13. Oh, well, that, I, I think can answer that one. <laughs> okay, the, the name is inspired uh, from the movie Hunger Games. And uh, because uh, I like the story behind the movie, and I suggest that the, the name, uh, for me, sounds cool, <laughs> District 13. You know, yeah. uh, i got to agree with you, Sina, I really, really do. Now, uh, I do have another fan question for you. A uh, young lady coming out of Egypt, she's asking us, how do we get hold of you as a fan? Are you on Facebook? Are you on Twitter? Are you on TikTok? Are you on Instagram? But more importantly, do you respond? Uh, we will respond. Yeah, we're actually on all those platforms. TikTok is new to me, um, but I ha we have created a profile about two or three weeks ago. Um, so yeah, it, all of them are... Well, if you go to our webpage, you'll find the links anyway. Uh, we were very responsive to email, um, info at district13band.com. Most of it's District 13 Band, so even the webpage, www.district13band.com or Facebook forward slash District 13 Band, you know, everything is that, so YouTube as well, so yeah, we definitely respond, so I will respond. Uh, believe me, I, I wouldn't have said yes, now you're going to get thousands uh, of people getting in touch with <laughs> no, yeah, within reason, yeah. <laughs> yeah, believe me, you'll be there all day. You'll never get any work done, literally. Uh, nice to know that you have a website. Now, on your website, do you have a merch store? Uh, we do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the first album, some T-shirts. Um, 
we're getting because uh, we recorded a second album. Uh, that isn't on there yet. The videos are, of course, all on there. But we we've got just the first album CDs for sale, badges, t-shirts uh, at the moment. Yeah. Very very cool. Now, tell me about Dark Horse. Which one of you is it, and or is it Richard? Uh, no, yeah, no, Dark Horse. I mean, with the lyric side of things. Most of the songs lyrically, I, I wrote the lyrics, and then and then we took take the sort of bare bones of the song into the rehearsal, and then we've jammed it out, and they've given their like you know, a, a sense of his drum style and Richard with his bass style has, has added then their 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 parts. So it's a, the dark horse. Uh, I mean, so, so lyrically that one is just sort of like the underdog, I guess, or like you know, the the, the chorus is like. Uh, a dark horse or a black sheep it's sort of like the outcast I guess or the one you least predict to get somewhere is kind of the influence from that. Well i got to let you know guys that at 1251 requests so far and climbing we do play you a lot here at Galaxy you're getting quite a following you've seemed to make a connection with our audio audience literally so let's get it underway you're right here at Galaxy here's Dark Horse <laughs> this <laughs> um i gotta let you know I, as i said i've been an engineer now for almost 40 years but i've worked with some of the biggest bands in the world not only here in new zealand but around the world and uh, yeah. when i said you know it's not often that i find a band i like um i, I gotta be honest i really do like district 13 i really do so thank you, to tina. Thanks, thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you. exactly i uh, gotta give a big shout out to tina as well really do coming out of germany uh, Busiscus? Is that the oh, right pronunciation? They might know how to pronounce it. How, how do you pronounce yeah. Tina's last name? Is it Busiscus? Uh, you know, to be honest, because uh, I, I'm terrible, we've always called her Tina, so I can't be honest, I don't have the answer yeah, to that. I, 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 was, I was taking your side on this one, Jonathan, literally. I was, <laughs> but I gave it a go. <laughs> I gave it a shot. <laughs> Tina, we love you. We really do. Yeah, thank you very thank much. You so much. Uh, but you guys also have um, close friends with some of our close friends as well. Close friends with some of yours. Yes. You, uh, believe me, yeah. we, we know a few people that know uh, that know you, well, including just... uh, Mr. Hatton, Tony Hatton. Hmm. Okay. Are, are these Facebook friends, though? Yes. Probably, probably. Um, yeah, the only danger, I mean, not danger, I mean, I'm sure they're all nice people, it's just uh, you, you get a lot of people in the feed and then you're like, you know, you don't know who yeah. you know, Tina's you know, been. Kill code. What about Kill Code? Kill Code, uh, I've heard of Kill Code because Tina used to work with them. Exactly, yeah. uh, and believe me, they're close friends of ours as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I've, I've heard of them. I've, I've checked out some of their music, actually, as well. They're in the U.S., aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, they're doing quite well, actually. I checked them out. They seem to be doing pretty well. Yep, yeah, they really are. And believe me, they've got a huge following here as well. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, they really do. And, and Tina, again, um, is Tina still working with them? I'm, I'm not, not sure. sure yeah. yeah. Not too sure. oh, I, I don't know, she's not working with them anymore, no. Okay. Uh, okay. I don't, I, don't think, I don't know if it ended so well, that, but as long as, no, as, long as we're not broadcasting, yeah, I don't think that was a good ending with it. So, yeah. uh, we're, we're, yeah, we are recording it. Yeah. <laughs> it is, it is on, uh, but the thing is, we can put a disclaimer in there. We can. Uh, oh, okay. It's a bit, you know, we're just general conversation, really. It is. Uh, we we have a young man that's watching us right now. His name is Gia Miranda, or Gay Miranda, coming out of Norway. And uh, his band, Viking Queen, huge, huge band in Norway, literally. This is the guy, are you familiar with Lord of the Rings, the movie? Yeah. 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 Okay, no, right. he wrote the score for it. Oh, yeah. awesome. You know, so he, awesome, yeah. he, he's watching you guys right now. You never know, he might want to do a show with you at some stage. Oh, well, yeah, that would be cool, yeah. Be I'd, love to, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd love to write music for films, actually, it would be pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, you never know, he might get in touch with you, John, and um, yeah. we can write a song together. He's done it before. <laughs> <laughs>
right, you're right here at Galaxy 107 FM. It is uh, five minutes after, well, going on six minutes after 11 o'clock and uh, 22 degrees. Even though I haven't won, it's ended up on my prediction anyway. So, well, you know, that happens. Friday, coming into a brand spanking new weekend. And yes, we've dipped right on back over to the UK to catch up with the boys from District 13. And it's an absolute pleasure to be able to meet these young men. Uh, now, Asin, uh, you don't actually come from England itself, do you? You're... Yes, yes. I'm born and raised in Bulgaria. It's a country in East Europe. Now, how long have you been playing the drums? Uh, I was 16 when I started playing drums. Uh, okay, okay. It was a long time ago. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. They're a late bloomer, Jonathan. Literally, yeah. most, most of the people I talk to, oh, I started when I was five, no worries, you know what I mean? No, yeah. no. <laughs> I, I used to play football when I was five, till 16, 17, then stopped with the football and started to uh, to play more uh, drums. And uh, my dream was to uh, have a rock band and have fun. <laughs> now, uh, at, yeah. at the same time, Asin, uh, I presume you're talking about soccer, the great game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, here in New Zealand, we call football rugby. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, we got the uh, the All Blacks, you know, they're pretty good at it. They've had a, you know, a win or two over the years. So, uh, believe me, uh, that's what we call. But we do have the All Whites as well, which is our New Zealand national soccer team. And, and soccer that's what we call yeah. yeah. That's where we call it. Uh, now, Jonathan, uh, which part of uh, London are you in? Uh, I live in uh, Islington, uh, which Archway is the, the exact part, but the, the uh, borough is Islington. Okay. So, uh, now, I'm quite familiar with England and with uh, London itself. I used to live in Piccadilly Circus and uh, work, oh, worked in... in the yeah. Yeah. yeah, look, I, I used to work in a place called Church. Hmm. I've heard of this church, yeah. I've, no, there's a, I've heard of an Aussie night called Church, where they uh, party all day and night is what I've heard of. Well, okay. uh, the church itself was literally a Kiwi Australian deal. You could only get in if you were a Kiwi Australian, it, but you could go with a friend, you know what I mean? You could take uh, a local with you, but at least they had to be a a Kiwi or an Australian in there. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. And uh, now, I, an Australian friend told me all about this. Yeah. <laughs> well, I used to be a DJ there. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so believe me, uh, I know a lot. Uh, used to spend a lot of time down the West End. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we we are played in Soho only once actually. Yes, it's Central London is. Uh, I and mean, most of the time we play around the Camden, North London, or sometimes South London. A lot of the venues seem to be around there. And Soho still has a lot of the venues, but they're very small, like the, the old small venues with a low ceiling that a lot of the punk bands would have played in in, in the 70s. Um, they're, they're, they're cool and everything. They're just, the, just the sound is very uh, chaotic. You know, it's a good raw show, I guess. Very cool. Uh, Brian Wayne Perry's on board. Nice to have you on board, my friend. Uh, what up, family? Love you all. Back at you, bro. Uh, Donnie Coulter. Again, Donnie, nice to have you back, my friend. Uh, you seem to be, uh, well, fanatic in watching us, and I thank you for that. I really, really do. Can't wait to get you back online for another interview in the near future, Donnie. I really, really can't. Now, tell me about Sweet Talk. Uh, uh, are you describing me? <laughs> Maybe, yeah. It's a little bit tongue in cheek, really. It's sort of I I, I tie the sweet talk. There's just sort of uh, yeah. You know what? You pick two songs which are kind of like done a little bit in a jokey style, like that one. The the pre-chorus, of course, open the door. Uh, I've heard it about a million times before. It's a little bit influenced by the Doors' uh, "Love Her Madly" when it's like, "Don't you love her when she's walking out the door?" So it's sort of, uh, yeah, yeah, it's sort of like that sort of thing when you're doing an argument, someone walks out and slams the door behind them. Very, <laughs> very cool. So right here, at Galaxy, we have District 13 coming out of the UK today. Here is Sweet Talk. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, I like your t-shirt too, by the way, Arson. Thank you. I've, I've worked with them. I've worked with them a couple of times. Really? Yeah, but I'm talking a couple of decades ago now. <laughs> yeah, this is my biggest inspiration in music. Really? So I, I started with drums because of uh, Metallica and okay, well, Lars Ulrich. Yeah. La, La, Lars is a genius, he Tina's really is. Just uh, Tina's just logged out. Tina's logged out. Say hi to Tina, she's on board, guys. Oh, hello. Hello. Tina. <laughs> <laughs> I love doing that to people. Hiya, Tina, nice to have you on board, and i got to thank you so much for introducing us to District 13. What a fantastic band, <laughs> getting a huge following here at Galaxy, and it can only get better. It really can. Um, Having said that, guys, I want to talk, we did mention very, very briefly about maybe touring to New Zealand. I wouldn't mind talking about that. What do you reckon? Yeah, I, I would be, I'd love, to, I'd love to go to New Zealand, and if I can tie it in with a tour, that would be, uh, be the best, best solution for me. Great idea. Oh, by the way, did you see that Sean Connery passed away yesterday? Sean Connery didn't pass away yesterday. He passed away like a few months ago. Did he? Oh, we we, yeah. only, we got some news yesterday saying that Sean Connery passed <laughs> away yesterday. Yeah, slow news in England. Uh, yeah. Sean Connery's a bit of a legend. I mean, James Bond. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, absolutely. But having said that, uh, I see Daniel Craig has finally completed and got the very last one of his out. Yeah, yeah, he has. Yeah, the, no, yeah, I haven't seen it though yet. No, neither um, have I. But did you see that it, they had to interrupt the filming for six weeks when he broke his ankle? Oh, uh, yeah, he's not as hard as he plays in the movie. While he was, don't forget, it's costing a huge amount of money every day by the hour that yeah. he, he's off sick. Um, the, all the management and all everybody with the franchise and everything like that said, hey, listen, with Daniel leaving, let's find somebody new to take his place that, you know, new, new age kind of, shall we make James Bond a female? Now, Believe me, I, I hate that idea because money penny's money penny. Yeah. But Ian Fleming wrote James Bond as a man. Leave him as a man, right? Yeah, I agree. Exactly. Yeah, I, I think it's just being stupid. It's like, why wouldn't you just create a new character? Exactly. Be, I mean, the book states one character, so yeah. go with that. Absolutely. I mean, otherwise... uh, hey, listen, I was a big fan of Pussy Can Walk. Um, <laughs> but... Seriously? No, true. There was an character called Pussy Galore. Now, um, but so, having so said that, I, I've heard now that they're going to make him, they've, they've come sort of halfway and says we're going to make him gay. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think none of them will work, really. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think so, was I? Uh, but at the same time, you know what they're going to call him now? What? Well. <laughs> yep. O7. Thank you, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you wonder what he's going to do with his Walter PPK now, doesn't it? <laughs> That's right, you're right here at Galaxy 107 FM and today I'm joined by District 13, absolutely fantastic band, I'm really really happy to be able to do this one and Tina believe me brilliant you're on to a winner you really are now having said that guys uh, and I'm, I'm rather interested in this uh, we did discuss maybe getting you guys down here in New Zealand I'm going to have a chat about that but first of all how's the COVID deal happening over there for you guys right now yeah um, is it coming through the other end can you see light at the end of the tunnel Mm, yeah, yes and no, really. I mean, I, I, to be honest, I, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I've never had it or felt any symptoms myself. But in terms of like the news, it's just one one day it seems like it's better than now. That's like now the news says uh, we've we're, our cases are skyrocketing and like uh, you know what they need to make decisions in the next few months. So I, I don't know. I mean, 
I, I thought, you know, when, when they put the vaccine out, it'd all be like, uh, start to go back to normal. And that, I, I think we won't have a lockdown anyway. But I just think international travel at the moment is always a bit risky. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We, we aren't uh, accepting anybody other than Kiwis with Kiwi passports back in. Then you've got to do your MIQ thing, if you know what I mean. Get your shots, yeah. all sorts of things including these days, and the government's pretty much making this mandatory now, if you haven't had your shots, you lose your job. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. You, oh, Literally, right. you get a passport thing to say you can and do things. If you haven't got your passport, you're pretty much a pariah. Okay, so we haven't got that, we haven't got that yet here, but uh, maybe, maybe soon. Yeah, well, I, uh, you see, we know Jacinda Ardern, who's uh, our Prime Minister, and she says to me, Grant, I was talking to Boris the other day, and guess what he said to me? And I went, go on, what did he say? And he, she goes, check it. I think it is sensible to wait just a little longer. Just a little longer. Just. <laughs> <laughs> At least, I mean, we don't want Brickset all over again with this. Come on, move on. Let's get it done, <laughs> literally. Uh, I don't know if he makes the best. But, uh... <laughs> well, I've got to be honest with you, I heard in the news this morning that uh, a little bit of strife happening there, a bit of corruption going on, and MPs uh, leaving like rats off a ship. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I think it's just, yeah, he's been pretty mad the whole time. I, I just think he says one thing, they do another thing. Yeah, I mean, even with the COVID to begin with, it's like, you know, it was going to spread all over Europe, and then we were staying open, and Boris Johnson yeah. was saying, with everyone. Yeah, but, and that's intensive cast. So. But, but having said that, Jonathan, and believe me, I've been there, it's all about the pub. You've got to get the pub open. Oh, yeah, the pub does have to be open, yeah. I mean, it's, it was pretty tragic for, for a long while there, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I, I mean, I what, what's... The world is so bad here. It's like, what are you going to do with that pub? I mean, you... Exactly. You're, I mean, you're... what what's an Englishman without a glass in his hand? Really? Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> Chrissy, uh, Chrissy, nice to have you on board. It's an absolute pleasure to have you with us. It really is. And believe me, today, you're going to love this band, Chrissy. You really are. District 13 is joining us out of the UK. Now, uh, guys, at the same time, I did mention that we were going to talk about getting you guys here in New Zealand playing in front of New Zealand audiences. Uh, I presume you'd like to take up the idea, but I've got a better idea for you. Let's not only do New Zealand, let's do Australia as well. What do you reckon? Oh, yeah, that would be awesome, yeah. I'd it, love to do that. Awesome. I love people like this, so, yeah. It, it kind of makes it financially viable now, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, makes, it does definitely, yeah. I would love to come to Australia. I mean, the home of ACDC is uh, <laughs> that sells it anyway. But I would love to go to Sydney and travel both countries. Have, have you ever met ACDC? Uh, no, I've seen them live, but I've not, uh, I've not met them, though. No. <laughs> I've been working with them for 33 years. Wow. And in fact, yes. one of my... Did you, meet, did you No, you didn't meet Bon Scott then. You're not quite uh, that I, long enough. Well, I tell you what, uh, a very close friend of mine, Dave Evans, was the founder and first lead singer of ACDC. All oh, right, OK. And I'll introduce you to him if you would like. Uh, Philip Rudd, the former drummer, lives about an hour and a half away from my place and has slept on my couch many times. Oh, okay, really, Phil Rudd. <laughs> and uh, Bon Scott, yes, I've met him once. Oh, okay, awesome. Uh, yeah, no, uh, he's, he's definitely one of my idols. I, 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 lo I mean, I love ACDC in general, so that's one of my favourites. I, I got the job by mistake, to be honest with you there, engineer. Yeah. Couldn't make it one year. Uh, and, uh, the uh, company that was bringing him into the country says, Grant, would you like to do it? And they were that impressed. I got the job every, every year or every time they came back. After that, you know what I mean? So believe me, yeah. been a fantastic career with those guys. It really has. Uh, and I could run you a list of huge amount of bands that I've worked with, including In Excess and uh, David Bowie, Michael Jackson, Queen, uh, Metallica. Yeah. You, believe me, <laughs> there has been a lot of bands that I've worked with over the years. Uh, that's why, again, it is that important to get through to you that it's not often that I find a band I like. And this is... The music I like, you're producing this. Now, at the same time, through this COVID deal, are you writing more? Are you recording more at the moment? Um, well, currently, because we've got a new album, no, but the, the last, the new album 
we we wrote a lot of that was done during the covid in fact uh, yeah. stepping to the fire um I mean, a lot of the songs, they're not necessarily just directly messaged at one thing, but Step Into The Fire, some of the lyrics are, are kind of pointing that way, um, particularly in the bridge section. It's kind of like this, how everyone's life suddenly changed and, you know, how we're having to then cope with it. Because I, you, I just never expected it. I don't know, the whole idea of the world going into some sort of lockdown and everything shutting the scene, mm. you could never imagine that happening really, you know. So, uh, okay, keeping in mind, now that we've discussed about getting you down here, down under to the Antipodes, <clears throat> got to let you know, guys, we're a little crazy down here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I yeah. We are real. Have you ever heard of a hoo-hoo grub? Uh, what? No. A hoo-hoo grub. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to tell you what you would call it. You'll figure it out. Uh, believe me, but... Uh, a hoo hoo grub, literally, you, you're familiar with a caterpillar, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is nothing like it. Literally, it's bigger, it's white, like a double decker bus to a mini, to be honest. And uh, are you familiar with the uh, tequila white worm deal? Yeah, I've seen that, yeah. Okay, well. I've never had it, I've seen it. Yeah. Okay, we have a version of that where you have alcohol before. Some try during and afterwards is always mandatory as well. Uh, but what you do is you put the live body in your mouth, rip off the head, don't eat the head. But when you crunch down on this, it's like eating creamy peanut butter. Really? <laughs> and it tastes as good? <laughs> yeah, it does. It really does. And believe me, uh, uh, the indigenous folks of New Zealand, <clears throat> the Maori, still today uh, use it as a delicacy. We use it as a tradition here at Galaxy. Uh, more Barbara is the manager and owner of the uh, entertainments company Aurora Entertainments that brings bands into the country. She's a one-stop shop literally from scaffolding, staging, sound equipment, staff, you know it. She does the whole logistics literally. <clears throat> so uh, That's she's, a lot of work. Yeah, but not so much over the last two years, I've got to be honest with you. <laughs> it's been pretty... <laughs> Yeah, naff actually. Yeah. Uh, but having said that, uh, and Jonathan, you would know them as a witchetty grub. A witchetty grub? Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not familiar with it. <laughs> okay, well, I'll tell you what. I'll get Barbara to send you the instructional video, okay? Okay, okay. Just, I'll, I'll, check, I'll check that one out. <laughs> just, just to show you that, well, to be quite honest with you, I'm not pulling your leg. We actually do do this. <laughs> we really do. Are you familiar with New Zealand at all? Do you know anything about it? Uh, I know, uh, well, I know that you have very nice mountains, whales, yeah. that, uh, and um, Flight of the Concords. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> great TV show, really. There's <laughs> great guys, too. We, we love them here in New Zealand as yeah, well. Ask John if he would like to drink a bomb again. Tell me about this, John. Oh, oh. right. Okay. <laughs> that, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that, that's a Bulgarian thing. Uh, what was it called? Uh, an, uh, it, Inception bomb. Inception bomb. Yeah, it, it made me feel like the movie... I was as confused as watching the movie Inception, actually. Uh, it was... <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, do you know what? It's because we just finished recording the album, and I didn't. I tried to not drink much in a whole week because the voice and uh, it was. I was having to record a lot of vocals in a few days, and um, they got to the last night. I had the plane ride the next day, and it was just. Uh, I mean, I, I was unconscious. He had to. He had to drive. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, it was yeah. falling all over the place. It was really. <laughs> it was. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Uh, I, te I tell you what, Arson, I want you to send Barbara the recipe for that, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll be in for it, you know, I'll give it a go myself, absolutely. Uh, in fact, I was talking to a young man coming out of Canada this morning. But and he says, no Jaeger bombs where they, they drop uh, the, the Jaeger in the bread bowl. Well, it was really like a jug, and then it was almost, I don't know what all the alcohol was, but it was like a, one falls into this one, 
and that falls into a jug. So you're literally drinking a big jug. Yeah. Or it wouldn't even be legal in many countries, but they've got to <laughs> do a little bit. We, you know, we, drink, we drink a lot in Bulgaria, so... <laughs> we, we do something similar with beer, uh, Jägermeister yeah. and Giuliano. And we call that a, a depth charge. A depth charge, okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll give that one a try. Yeah, yeah do that. Yeah. Believe me, it's bad. We, we can share recipes. <laughs> do that because, believe me, I'm a big fan of having a, a, a tipple every now and again. I'm going to be honest with you. You do this job for long enough, you really want to go to the pub afterwards. You do. You, you really do. <laughs> uh, literally, uh, and I've got to be honest with you guys. Uh, and I'm really impressed that you're having a drink, actually, the arson. Uh, I start work yeah. about 11.30, 12 o'clock at night, and I'm lucky to get out of here by about 8 o'clock at night. You know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. that's why I'm a big fan of going to have a drink after work, you know, <laughs> bang, get, woo, let's do this. <laughs> now, having said that, here in New Zealand, and let me fill you in a little bit about New Zealand. Uh, we're made out of four, uh, out of three islands. Four, if you count Australia, we'll take credit for that one as well, <laughs> literally. Uh, but we're made out of three islands, a very, very small one down the bottom of New Zealand, the only one that actually got a real name. It would weird. Uh, it's called Stewart Island, if you know what I mean. And then those who named New Zealand ran out of imagination, literally, and called the next one South Island. Mm -hmm. I'll give you I'll give you a few few shots of what they would call the next one after that. <laughs> cool. Where? North, yeah, until you ah. hole in one right there, Jonathan, literally. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got these three islands. Now down the west coast of the South Island there's a little place called Hokitika that has a wild foods festival. Now, you guys are familiar with festivals, you know, kids wandering around candy plots, hot dogs on a stick, stuff like that, right? Yeah. Yeah, not there. <laughs> you might find a kid wandering around with a deep fried locust or something like that. Oh. <laughs> literally, literally. Uh, it, it's really wild foods. But this is where they uh, partake in the <clears throat> the hoo hoo grub. Now, seriously, guys, you got to wonder about the mentality of the person handing you a bowl of these white wiggly things and expecting you to eat one. <laughs> You do, you do. Uh, don't worry about the mentality. There is none. It's me handing you the bottle, okay? Literally. Now, do you know much about Australia? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I've been a guest there. You were once English, a lot of them. Okay, well, let me, let me put you in here. Uh, New Zealand was colonialised, got that word right today, uh, colonialised by Captain Cook, right? An, yeah, an yeah. Englishman. Uh, whereas Australia was used as a prison. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, true. You, you English people got it right the first time. <laughs> uh, don't, don't forget, we play rugby here. We have a love-hate relationship. You know what I mean? Australia. Yeah, yeah. We have the All Blacks. They have the Wallabies. Wallabies, sorry. Wanna, wallabies. <laughs> uh, it, Believe me, they get a bit of stick from me at, at the same time. Now, have you ever heard of Queenstown? Yeah. yeah. Queenstown, yeah. Okay, no, not Queensland. That is in Australia. Uh, that's the place where all the men wear dresses and high heels, drive fast and women's clothing. Call it drag <laughs> racing, I think they do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, oh, by the way, are you familiar with the Spice Girls? You should be, right? Of course, yeah. I mean, the Spice Girls... Uh, Okay. Yeah, but yeah, I am familiar. Okay, well, I was, I was talking to an Australian woman not so long ago, and she says, Grant, uh, this COVID thing over here is much like the Spice Girls. And I went, how do you get that one? She goes, well, you know, the country's doing okay, except for Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> but also... <laughs> yeah, literally, she did do that one to me. Uh, Queenstown, now, Queenstown is a little boutique town come city where all the A-listers from around the world go and get away from the paparazzi and other people like that, yeah. maybe maybe the wife or the husband or something like that. Shania Twain owns property down there. Uh, Pre-pandemic was uh, Kevin Costner, Keanu Reeves, 
uh, the deal, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Literally, Tom Cruise was down there, the whole deal. Uh, so it's one of those places where you never know who you're going to run into, uh, but guys, if we take you down there, you don't want to run into me. <laughs> Is that where we can stay if we are? If we come down, if we do a tour, we're going to stay where uh, Kevin Costner and Tom Cruise and everyone stay. Yeah, we can do that. We really, really can, believe yeah. me. Yeah, in the face. Yeah, well, no, actually, they uh, <laughs> have some pretty plush hotels and motels down there, and you know, a lot of the uh, dignitaries go and stay down there. But the reason why you don't want to run into me is we have a thing down there. Well, literally, I'll throw you off a bridge. You'll throw us off a bridge. Yeah, I'll throw you okay. off a bridge. Absolutely. We have a thing down there called bungee jumping. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. I, 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 one of my, I know people who have gone there to do bungee jumping. I was going to say when you said, do you know anything about New Zealand? That was one of the things I was going to say. There you go. Well, you know what? You're not Australian. We'll attach the bungee. <laughs> No one. Sort of, <laughs> sort of. Uh, at the same time, we have a big slingshot swing that we will, um, well, just project you out over, okay, over this canyon. It's fantastic, it really is. Uh, if it doesn't make your heart pump, you're not alive, right? Yeah. Okay, I'd love to do it. I've never done it, but I would love to do it. Okay, well, while we're down there, see, it's going to take a little while, so uh, we might even get a show in down there. Uh, while we're down there, there's a place called the Shot Over River. Now, this is fantastic, and i tell you why. They have these big jet boats, and believe me, mm -hmm. super-powered boats, they turn these things inside out, upside down, all around, and they guarantee you won't spill your beer. Okay. Now, I had an American say to me, why won't I spill my beer? I said, quite simply, you know, we're civilised, we put caps on it, you know, lids. <laughs> <laughs> it's a simple solution. Uh, anybody uh, scared of heights? Uh, no, I think uh, Oh yeah, you don't like planes, yeah. did you? Yeah, okay. okay. All right. Well, if I can drive, I will drive everywhere. Arson, Arson, I'm a skydiver and I'm an instructor. I would love to take you outside of an aeroplane. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> it's a bit challenge for me. Yeah, absolutely. Jonathan, let me tell you about this. Uh, not so long ago, just before the pre-pandemic thing, uh, I was sitting at home and the phone rings. Local airport rings me up and says, hey, listen, we've got a whole group of people here that want to go for a jump. I'm going, sweet, great. So I go down there and I just walk back, go and get changed, sit at the back of the room watching the instructors and everybody take them through all the, uh, the, the deal, literally. And I'm just sitting there watching this one guy. He looked so nervous, so nervous. I, I just pointed to the lady and went, he's mine. <laughs> right? I want that guy. <laughs> <laughs> As they're walking out to the plane, I shoot on past them and get into the back of the plane where everybody's going to be sitting in front of me, right? And my co-instructor hooks me into this guy, literally, you know, and everybody's going. And as we get to the door, he's pushing back like crazy. No, I don't want to go. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm leaning forward, leaning forward, leaning forward. And just at the tipping point of falling off, I hit him on his helmet and said, you've been an instructor long? <laughs> Dude screamed all the way down. He didn't shut up all the way down. <laughs> Absolutely funny. Uh, so, when you come around, tell me about this track. Uh, this one was written. Uh, this one was written. Um, this was before District 13, but I wasn't. It wasn't in any other band. I just, this was just written uh, at home. I was just piecing together ideas for if I could, could get a band together. So um, yeah, this track is actually one we, with the music experiments a bit with a synth. It's the only one we've actually decided to try a synth on a song. Uh, lyrically, it's uh, it's not really particularly directed at anything particular. Just sort of when you come around and sort of like when you, you get your mind back together kind of thing, uh, will you let me know? Like, I don't know, it's just like you can talk to that many people, you just think they're completely nuts. It's like whatever you're saying is not making sense to me. Talk to me when you make sense again, you know. Well, I can let you know, Jonathan, 2,700 requests to date, uh, and one request to date in climbing, this is something that's making a connection with our listeners. And believe me, I have a young lady that's asking, 
Jonathan, what would you call the pinnacle of your success right now? Pinnacle? Uh, well, I would just, in terms of music, I think the best thing, um, well, we've done as a band would have been playing the Hills Rock Festival in Bulgaria, because that's where um, Judas Priest and Iron Maiden were headliners for that. So, and we have been booked again. Well, we, we were booked for two years ago as well, but then there was the well, we've been booked consistently, but the pandemic keeps putting it back. So we are booked for this summer, uh, well, no, 2022 summer, in which, uh, yeah. who's headline? Slipknot and Sabaton. Sabaton, yeah, yeah. Okay, right. okay, good bands too, by the way. Uh, right yeah. here at Galaxy, joined live by the boys from District 13, yes, when you come around. <laughs> Uh, are you guys... A second? Yeah, go for it. Jonathan, you're not a vegan, are you? Uh, I'm vegetarian, yeah. Okay, you are? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not vegan, but vegetarian, yeah. Right, because I was actually talking to a vegan the other day, and I said to her, where do you guys hang out? And she goes, what are you talking about? I said, seriously, the only place I see you hanging out is on the news. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, how long have you been a vegetarian? Uh, for about uh, seven or eight years. Um, I, I mean, I, do, I, I still wear, I mean, I'm, I guess maybe I'm not strictly because I wear a leather jacket and stuff, so maybe that's... Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, probably, no, it doesn't uh, count. You're not eating it. Yeah, I'm not eating it. I, I, wear, uh, I wear the leather jacket, so maybe that's... I, I, don't kill too many animals then. No, no, no. no. That be a long time. Well, you're not responsible for the death of that jacket. Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah, I didn't, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, yeah, it was, it was just, uh, it wasn't I didn't like meat. I was just, uh, I wasn't a fan of all this uh, factory farming and stuff, so that well, was the main reason. I understand, I, I fully understand, bro, I really do. Um, Terry Van Cannon's joined. Terry Van Cannon's joined us. Believe me, great to have you on board, brother man. Terry Van Cannon coming out of North Carolina, one of the masters of slide steel guitar. Wicked. Nice to have you on board, bro. <coughs> Gosh, it's hot in here. I'm oh, sweating geez. like crazy. Can you give me some Kiwi air conditioning, please? Lucky for you, it's like one degree here. Wow, one degree. Believe me. Uh, Kiwi air conditioning. It's called Open the Bloody Window. <laughs> <laughs> How are we going? Okay. Cheers. Fine. Really impressed somebody's having a, a, a drink. Literally, I've gone through a, a number of entertaining Everyone. interviews this week and not one of them yeah. broke out anything alcoholic. Really? <laughs> oh, no, me, me, me it kind of goes, I, I have to. Well, I don't have to, but it's like, it's here, it's like, yeah, it's past half of ten, so it's perfect time for a beer. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Good on you guys, believe me. Uh, even the guys that I spoke to yesterday, Neon Fields. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of them was think, actually... Yeah, I feel like a lot more musicians these days are, uh, seem to live a, a more uh, uh, healthy lifestyle, actually. Yeah. <laughs> That's not rock and roll. Right, you're right here at Galaxy 107 FM and today joined by District 13 coming out of the UK. Absolutely fantastic to have us and, and John with us. Unfortunately, uh, uh, the third member, Richard, the bass player, is unable to make it today. But uh, we love him anyway. We really do. Uh, we'll send him the bill later. <laughs> he, he can pick up the check. Now, having said that, guys, uh, and we are... Uh, 
we have discussed about getting you here to New Zealand. Uh, are you familiar with Lord of the Rings? Yeah. 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 Okay. Absolutely. Well, the original set, the Hobbiton set, literally the very first movie that you see where they're going into Hobbiton itself, still mm -hmm. exists about an hour and a half away from where we are. So we'll take you there, show you, well, the staff will. Well, well, it's all done up still like the hob, like yeah. it is. Yeah, the absolutely. You get to see the the whole deal, literally the, the wishing tree. Is it free to go in? No, but we'll take care of that for you. Don't I'm worry. Just, I was just curious, yeah, because I went to Malta in the summer and they had uh, the Popeye set from the 80s. It was Robin Williams. And uh, I, I wanted to go in, but it's like, uh, yeah, I don't know. They were charging a lot for that. But I'll pay for Lord of the Rings more likely. So I, I never yeah. want Yeah, well, uh, at least, uh, I mean, the staff will have to take you because I'm not allowed back. He's a naughty boy. Yeah, You're well, like, what did you do? <laughs> Well, I had an issue with the security guard, and his car sort of went missing. <laughs> it's been missing now for almost three years, but they actually got it back the other day. It was actually uh, uh, big posts everywhere saying, hey, listen, we got it back. Uh, literally, uh, yeah. I'm also a pilot, and I know how to fly fixed wing and rotor, right? <laughs> so I uh, commandeered this particular vehicle of theirs, and drove it down this motorway. You can imagine a golf cart going down a motorway, how much attention that grabs in its own right. Got it to a friend's place, went to Rotorua, picked up a rotor, uh, and uh, came back and dumped the thing in the middle of the lake. <laughs> lake Rotorua, which is a big lake. It's huge, literally. Yeah. Problem is, uh, after three years, then thing popped up. <laughs> somebody in a, somebody in a boat literally almost ran over it, towed it back to the shore, dragged it out, got in touch with the police. The, the police went through the bin numbers, everything like that, to find out it was from the Lord of the Rings set. <laughs> <laughs> so you never know, I might actually be allowed back now that they got it back. <laughs> having said, yeah, should... yeah, but having said that, you see, I've got an ace in my back pocket. I've got to be straight up with you. Uh, Peter Jackson, Sir Peter Jackson, uh, the producer yeah. of the movie, I actually went to university with. He's a close friend of mine, and uh, really? yeah, no, wow. I, I can't call him. I really can't call him Sir Peter because I've got drunk with this man many times. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and, and if you ever want to see some of his earlier work, uh, let me recommend um, Meet the Feebles. Now, you must be familiar with the Muppets, right? Yeah. With, with yeah. the Muppets? Muppets. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Muppets. Oh, Muppets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, this is like an adult version of it. Oh. <laughs> Literally. Okay, so, I, I, no, I'm like, yeah, that would be quite interesting, I guess. Hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. Every car is a uh, Morris Minor. Oh. <laughs> yeah, literally that old. Uh, but I, re I remember him making that movie, literally, and we were, he got all of us out there looking for these Morris Miners from everywhere, literally. Uh, we, we managed to do it. We did. We got it done. A uh, great movie, too, by the way. You'll love it. I don't have Morris Miner anymore. I, I must have yeah. said. Of one a year, maybe. Yeah, oh, believe me. One of the few cars that used to float, like the uh, V-Dub. Back in the day. Uh, I don't know if the new V-dubs float these days. The, the old ones did, the German ones, anyway. Uh, now, we're about to wrap this up, but this is coming to the pinnacle, because believe me, guys, uh, Step Into the Fire right now is way over 3,000 requests. Why is our audio audience relating to this more than anything? Um, I think this song, I think... Uh... I think this song is a. I'm, I'm very happy with the finished product because it's got a lot of different changes and, and the groove to it, the pounding drums, that is great groove that uh, sends put to it. Uh, it's got a very dark edge to it as well, but also just a high lifting chorus. And I think, uh, yeah. I think that's the. I, I, for me, I'm very happy this because this is off our new album. All the tracks we've obviously had today were off the first album. Same producer um, we've used, um, but he's. I, I just think we've nailed it even more with our new album that we've coming out. So yeah, yeah, well, as I say to you, I've been an engineer for many, many years now, and I've listened to your music. I don't listen to it as a fan would. 
I listen to it as an engineer, as a DJ, if it's commercially viable, blah, blah, blah. But I'm really impressed. I've already told you that I really like your music. Uh, I have you literally playing in my car. <laughs> and that yes, <laughs> doesn't happen often as well. That's right. It really is. Uh, but believe me, I can't fault your work. Now, let's give a plug for your recording studio. Is it a home recording studio or is it a professional studio? It is a professional, yeah, professional studio. Um, our producer is a really, really good uh, and famous in my country, in Bulgaria. So uh, we went to Sofia, uh, to his studio and recorded the albums there. Okay. And so he's, he's a really nice uh, person and uh, yeah. it's a pleasure to work with him. So, okay, Asun. Give me the name of the recording studio. Let's get it. Get that secret out there. Uh, the, his name is Georgie. Georgie Stanev. But uh, the studio is, uh, there is no name. It's <laughs> just at his place. So, yeah. Okay. So if you uh, want to be recorded by that recording studio, bug the hell out of Arson. Okay. He'll give you the address. Yeah. Studio. It's like a studio, though, isn't it? It's like, I mean, most of the time I was playing with his dog when we were recording. Yeah, so. it was uh, <laughs> <at his> <laughs> Now, uh, oh, speaking of dogs, by the way, Jonathan, uh, how's, what happened with your one? Because... Uh, uh, no, do you know what? He's actually got a bit of a glimmer of hope. I, I cancelled last week because uh, the vet had said that he was uh, going to have to be put down the next day. They thought he had a uh, certain... Uh, problem with the spine where the legs go um, but he's actually reacted to these steroids and he's uh, he's, he's, he's started to uh, as much as they thought he had one thing he must he might not have that thing so he's actually he's soldiering on he's soldiering on at the moment that's, is, uh, that's fantastic I'm a big dog fan myself I got a couple yeah. myself you know what I mean and when Barbara says to me you're having a few problems with your dog I was really yeah. upset about that. I really, well, I totally yeah, understood. Like, I was going to say, I don't know. He's such a, you get so attached, and he's, he's like, uh, he's ten. So, um, yeah. I, but he's soldiering on. He's, uh, he's definitely, he's got, he's got some more, uh, he's got some more to go. So, uh, I, I'm quite happy. Yeah, I was pretty relieved after a few, he, after a few days. It seems like he's on a bit of a mend. That's brilliant news. I'm really, really happy, not only for the dog, but for you as well, and the rest of your family, everything like that. Uh, huge gap to fill when they go, you know what I mean? So, uh, oh, yeah. No, it's, it's, it is devastating. I know you get so attached to them, it's uh, strange, but they are, they are brilliant. <laughs> they really, really are. Unconditional love, too, from any dog, yeah. literally. So, uh, yeah. so pleased about that. Right here at Galaxy. District 13, step into the fire. You're gonna love yeah. this. Yeah. How you feeling, guys? Yeah, that was great. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll wrap it up after this, but please don't go anywhere because uh, the girls want to take some photos of you guys and uh, we'll put all of this, all part of the package. Now, are you familiar with the um, Galaxy Artist page on Facebook? Uh, I've been on there, yeah. I've checked yeah. It out. Good, really good. Well. Use it. It's free for you. Uh, literally, if, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you've got a new song, if you've got a new label, if you've got a new logo, if, you, if you've got the opening of a shoebox, oh, yeah. put it on there because there are so many people who look at that and literally you don't know whether they're labels, whether there are promoters, venue owners, or just a fan. Keep, yeah, yeah, keep promoting yourself in there. Well, well definitely, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have lots of stuff coming soon, actually. We've got, we've got a gig um, all the way in Blackpool. I don't know, you, you know Blackpool's like way up north in like England, so yeah, we've got a gig on Saturday. We've got to travel up to Blackpool, so we, we'll have the, it's a, a day festival, so we'll have some stuff to post from that. Nice, nice. Please put it on there, because the, the world wants to follow you guys. I, I can see this by your stats and, and what, how we get a reaction from people here at Galaxy. All about you. We'll introduce gear to them. You want, okay. Um, Barbara says she's going to introduce gear to you. Uh, believe me, you're going to love his band too, which is Viking Queen, um, coming out of Norway. Um, and, and he's the guy that wrote the score for um, Lord of the Rings. And I'll oh, awesome. I'll so he, he may want to write something with you, Jonathan. 
Oh yeah, I, I'd be up for it. I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I would, I would love to write for, for films. <laughs> well, he, he doesn't write for films. He writes for bands and um, uh -huh. rock music and stuff like that. But yes, he does do films and stuff as well. You know what I mean? Uh, I right, think right. I think it was Warner Brothers that picked up on it. Don't think it was Universal Studio. I think it was Warner Brothers that picked up on it. Yeah, but um, he's in a rock band himself. Yeah, he is in a rock band himself. Absolutely. Well, he's the manager of it. Yeah, Viking Queen. Uh, we'll send you some information about it. Okay, you'll you'll love it. Yeah, yeah. Now, talking back, let, let's get back to talking about promotions for District Thirteen because there's a number of things we can do here. And I would like to get Barbara to introduce you to a friend of mine coming out of India. Um, he lives in a region of about 8 million people, and he has a magazine, right? And believe mm -hmm. me, I, I think he knows each and every one of these people by first name, to be honest with you. <laughs> but we would like to get Barbara to introduce you, do a, a, a group chat thing and I'll to get you in this magazine. Would you be interested in that? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. yeah. In India, did you say? Yeah, yeah. Believe me, I'm it's a global it. magazine. It really is a global yeah. magazine. Yeah. Um, but he's based in India. Fantastic magazine. In fact, I was talking about Dave like Evans, him. the first lead singer and founder of ACDC. He was in, I think, the one before last? Something like that. We got him in that one. <laughs> Move pennies watching. Yeah. Kia ora, bro. Nice to have you on board. Good it really is. Uh, moves a uh, an artist coming from the far north. He's been in the magazine. He's been in the magazine, he has, literally. Um, but yeah, we would love to continue to be able to promote you as much as possible. Now, just wondering, guys, how about doing me a couple of voice drops? Like, hi, this is Jonathan and this is Arson from District 13 on yeah. Galaxy 107 FM, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Cool. Uh, well, you need to send just an audio file? Yeah, yeah, MP3. Yeah, not a way. For a few different ones, yeah, yeah. We, we'll definitely, I can awesome, definitely get that. Awesome, awesome. Uh, because again, the more times our fans hear you and hear your name, the more they get to know who you are, go looking for you, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but I am going to ask you, do you have a T-shirt you could throw me with your brand on it? Because when people do these, and today, believe me, I'm wearing Tommy, um, People get on the interwebby thing and they're checking you out while they're watching the interviews and stuff like that. So I would be honoured to be able to wear your brand. Uh, yeah, we can we yeah. can send t-shirts here. Yeah, we've got some we've got some in stock. We can send off to you. Nice. And yeah, if you've got absolutely. a few, if you've got a few spare CDs and some koozies or something like that, let's do a competition. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Let's keep your name rolling here. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah absolutely. we've got the first album, we need to get the second one printed still, because uh, that we with the label it's all digital there, working with, but we've got the first album all printed CDs and then uh, we can send some t-shirts as well. Nice. Absolutely. Nice. Let's go back to the desk. Well, what do you know? Six minutes away from midday, lunchtime, I've got in there. Not bad timing, actually. 22 degrees. That's my prediction for the day. Barbara's already won, but it's going to hang out at 22. I know it is. And believe me, it's going to be a great day. It is Friday, November the 5th. And today we're talking to District 13 coming out of the UK. And uh, guys, we are going to have to wrap it up here. Uh, but just wondering... Will you release new stuff with us? Will you send us more new music when you're going to do that? And will you come back for another interview? Yeah, certainly. Yeah, we'll do that. We've actually got our next single uh, is going to come out in December. Is targeted. It's going to be quite different, actually. It's actually an acoustic song. So it's the first time we've uh, uh, gone that direction. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we'll send that one to you. But uh, and, and certainly when our, our second album's come, going to come out in March, April, fourteen tracks in total on this one. So it's quite a big one. We've got some, uh, got quite a big range. It's still going to be hard pumping rock like the first one, but it's definitely got a bigger scope. We've got like uh, acoustic ballad one as well, like uh, and some other elemental sounds. So you know, guys, I would be honoured to be able to have. 
a follow-up interview with you guys. Literally, yes, I'm interested in the acoustic version as well. Great experiment. It really would be. So uh, as an engineer, I'm looking forward to uh, hearing the completed work on that. Uh, but in the meantime, don't go anywhere, guys. I'm just going to switch over to the other studio. For those of you that are watching on Facebook right now, I've got to say thank you so much. Uh, it is Friday. Have a very safe and successful weekend. I'll be back on Monday between 6 and 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and we've got a number of interviews next week that you're going to love. You really, really are. Uh, if you're going to watch over there on YouTube, you know what to do, right? Uh, no, you do. Literally, sub, thumb, bell. Bingo. Uh, bell, notifications, where we have important people like District 13. Join us. Have a great weekend. See you next week. In the meantime, guys, hang in there. We're going to switch on over to the other studio. Galaxy 107 FM.